Welcome everybody to another 12 o'clock show with Mayor Joe with our special guest and good friend, President Debbie Dunlap. How are you? Good. How are you? Not too bad. I, you just got back from vacation. You're yes. looking very refreshed and energetic. Yes. Uh, so you're ready for the long haul for today. Absolutely. Right, we've got an intermission plan. We've got snacks. We've got pillows. So we're all set for about the next hour, hour and a half. Um, so it's everybody's either favorite time of the year or the worst time of the year. School starting next week. So are you excited? Tell me about it. What are you most excited for? You know, it's kind of funny. I mentioned this at the board meeting last night. Um, it is an exciting part of the year for me, and but I have mixed feelings. So if you ever saw that, uh, it's either Staples or one of those commercials where the dad is pushing the cart um, very joyfully down the aisle mm -hmm. and saying the song is it's the most wonderful time of the year and the, the kids are slogging behind behind him and it they're sad and and so as a parent, I never felt like that because I was really excited to have my kids home over the summer to be able to uh, do some other learning outside of the classroom and do fun things. But um, I think as um, you get very close and on the edge and as a board member, um, I get so excited for this time of the year. Um, yesterday, I went to uh, meet with the bus drivers, um, also the nurses. I got to attend Raider check-in with my daughter, so kind of seeing everybody calm all the kids um, after a long summer and connect with people they haven't seen in a while, compare schedules. Um, they got these really cool water bottles, which I've stolen from my daughter already, um, get their schedules, and there's just so much excitement um, in the air. So um, I also attended new principal orientation, um, and so it was really neat to see and to talk to some of those new principals and what their plans were. Uh, for the year. So um, we approved our bus schedule last night. Of course, you know, that's always very, very always. important. Um, and uh, this year we're focusing on the three R's. We're focusing on relationships, reading, and arithmetic. So um, we're increasing our communication also this year. Um, I always think that we have some great communication vehicles, but we're trying to increase that a little bit. I think that you can always do better. I have a few notes, mm -hmm. not to elongate. Um, Already, um, our interim superintendent has had some communication going home um, about safety and security, fees, lunch prices, um, other welcome and yeah. back to school information. Um, I know that uh, Dr. Dan Good and some other cabinet members um, and board members were at our first scrimmage, our mm -hmm. first football scrimmage, handing out some information there. Um, we've been sharing a lot on social media um, as well. Um, and I know that uh, I asked for one of those nice little graphics. I'm a very visual person. So we had a graphic that went out that had all the important dates for the beginning of the school year, the middle of the school year, and the end of the school year. We won't talk about that yet. My daughter's graduating and I'm in denial. Um, so also we have our own app. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to bring it up, but that might take too long. But we have our own app if you don't have that down yet, and it has a lot of information, news, events, a directory, maps, all sorts of stuff. Um, so uh, trust and transparency between our district, our board, um, uh, our, our cabinet, everyone is the hallmark of um, our mission this year. Well, I think with uh, Superintendent Dan Good, I think you've got uh, somebody who's going to be able to do a lot of those things. Um, I was a tiny little fish in the big pond of Columbus City Schools when he was there, but he and I got to know each other over the past couple of weeks. We were able to uh, attend uh, the fun event, which was the wall breaking for the new library, so he was there for that. Uh, but we also had some good meetings uh, with our police department and with, with uh, school safety and security staff to right. make sure that we're all on the same page and ready to go for next year, so it's really good. So before we get too far into it, speaking of police department, I'm just letting everybody who's watching know now that the chief of police and all of RPD has already been informed that for the first few weeks of school, they're going to be in those school zones. And so let us make sure we understand what that means. When it's flashing, don't drive fast. And again, to clear up some confusion out there, don't know if you knew this or not, Summit, Rose Hill, Lancaster, Wagner, and um, oh, what's the other one? I know there's another one, and Taylor Road. Those are not expressways. I didn't know if you knew that. Um, they're also not passing lanes either. You shouldn't necessarily be doing that. So if you are, um, Mayor's Court's on Thursday, and I look forward to seeing you. Uh, it'll be a great time. Um, I'm always happy about seeing some of those people that decide that school zones are for speeding. So just be warned, they're out there watching. So. And so, and if I could put a special plug for um, right in front on Livingston, in front of Reynoldsburg High School, mm -hmm. Livingston campus, there's that crosswalk, and those lights go on up on top, and that means stop. Right, because kids are crossing there. Yeah. So, 
and we, lots of other crossing guards out there as well. So I think sometimes people pay more attention attention to the crossing guards who are standing there with the big stop sign. Yeah. But sometimes I see those lights go up and not everybody uh, stops. So what we've learned is don't speed and don't hit children. So just in case everybody was unclear. Uh, now there's been a lot of changes since last year, uh, just in, in staff, administration, all of those different types of things. Um, and knock on wood, this is the first year in a while that we're kind of opening I don't want to say normal because there is no such thing as normal anymore, but we're opening it in the most traditional way that it has been in, in, in a number of years. So tell me about what that's been like, um, how things have been progressing. So it's been progressing very well. Um, we do have a lot of changes. Uh, most of those changes have been in our cabinet and in our schools mm -hmm. um, as far as personnel. Um, if you watched the board meeting last night, you got a little bit of a taste about some of the changes that are coming up. Um, through this school year. We talked mm -hmm. about those and, and passed some of those. Um, I wanted to just, um, I know you mentioned Dr. Uh, Dan Good, as I did as well, um, but he is coming in as our interim superintendent as we transitioned um, Gary Lee Ogden to a consulting role. And he has more than 30 years of experience mm -hmm. with experience as a superintendent in Worcester and Westerville, and most people know in Columbus City Schools. Mm -hmm. So he is bringing, bringing a lot of experience with him. Um, I know he has been out visiting our schools. I've attended a number of meetings with him. Um, I've even heard that he rides buses mm -hmm. and he has been known to don a chef's jacket and cook for kids and serve kids. So um, I know he talked about riding a bus. Um, we'll see if we can get him into a kitchen or out serving some food. <laughs> um, he's very hands-on. Um, so if uh, anyone does want to reach out to him, uh, I would encourage you to do that via email, a telephone call. Uh, we're already planning some meetings and some coffees between the board, the community, and um, uh, Superintendent Dan Good. So um, I'm excited for those, just trying to strengthen those bonds, um, those relationships. Again, we're talking about the three R's this year, relationship, reading, and arithmetic. Um, and my arithmetic could probably use, use a little, little work. Yeah, yeah. right. So. Um, but speaking of um, access, I also wanted to mention that last night uh, we approved moving our board meetings mm -hmm. back into our schools on a rotating basis, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. We did that when we first came on board mm -hmm. um, as board, well, when I first came on board, and you were already there. Yeah. And um, it lasted, I don't know if that was six months or a year, uh, we transitioned out of that, and I really wanted to go back to that for a real long time. Mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of reasons, it gets board members into buildings, we try to get into them as much as possible, but some people have day jobs and they can't get in there and they can't break away. Um, but this allows them to get a little flavor of what the school is like, looking at the art, um, maybe talking to some of the personnel that are in there. Um, but also, um, I appreciate the space that you lend us every mm -hmm. month, uh, but sometimes that can be a little intimidating for community members and parents when we're kind of up on that platform looking down. Um, and so, by going into schools, we are hoping that families and parents and community members feel a little bit more comfortable going into a space that they feel safe in. So um, we are starting that in September at Reynoldsburg High School Summit Campus. October is at Herbert Mills Elementary. November will be Wagner Road Junior High. And December is French Run. We're gonna remind everybody lots of times. Um, so, uh, I just want to mention some new cabinet members. We have a lot of new people who are supporting Dr. Dan Good as well. Um, Naeem Sanders, he's our new assistant uh, superintendent. Amazing. He's an author as well. Um, I think his most recent book is The Beautiful Struggles of Teaching. Um, I saw an interview with him and uh, I highly recommend uh, a little bit of reading or even finding out that pot or looking for that podcast. Um, Greg Pollock is our new director of business. Mm -hmm. Um, he hit the ground running, getting the schools ready for everyone to come back, getting um, athletic fields ready. Uh, Brittany Griffin is, uh, has been with us for quite some time, but she is now our new HR director. Um, and she had an incredibly successful job there um, that uh, there was a lot of publicity for it. It was very well run. Um, I popped in for a little bit. So we're so proud that she has stepped up to that role. And then, of course, uh, we have a lot of other um, members of our staff, teachers, support mm -hmm. staff, um, that are always new every year. So we've been trying to welcome them at meetings um, and in the schools and with some uh, Raider, Raider swag. Um, over the summer, we've also worked really hard to get um, some of our athletic 
uh, fields and some of our buildings up to par. Um, and so we can start the year with uh, a really strong start. One of them I want to mention is the uh, soccer field, the varsity mm -hmm. soccer field over at Baldwin. And I just looked at a video that was uh, put together by Field Source, um, who we have consulted with, and they're contracting with them. Um, you know, there's new sod and new grass, um, divots were filled, um, we've gotten rid of the weeds, irrigation system, um, power wash the um, stands. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just looks great. And so uh, we're really excited for that field as well as, you know, lots of other areas uh, to welcome kids as we get back into the new school year. Teachers were there this week. Students start next week. Yep. I've heard from a few teachers already about, uh, what the, about how much they're enjoying professional development. <laughs> um, they had a week of it this yep, year. I know. It's, it's always interesting with professional development because it's something that you have to have. You want to put it in there. But I also know that I'm sure a lot of teachers are just kind of like, okay, well, I want to get into my room. I want to get, you know, get the room That's set up. That's the and fun like part, that. Yeah, that right? Is, that is the fun part. My mom was a teacher, and I always loved going in at the beginning of the school year and helping her put up bulletin boards and decorate. Mm -hmm. And I look at on uh, social media and some of the pictures of these rooms that oh, these yeah. teachers. And like I don't know they're all like Pinterest people or something because these are amazing they're just such welcoming spaces I always got a kick out of it because uh, you know I had the opportunity to go in when I was on the board and now into elementary schools and everything is so bright and cheerful and colorful and as a former high school teacher high schools don't always have that same emphasis on things I tried to do as best a job as I could but it's kind of like it's kind of like with my son when we took him to his uh, dorm room this week at Ohio State. Um, you know, we saw pictures from a lot of other f uh, families that had daughters, and their rooms were right out of a Pottery Barn catalog. Yeah. Um, but my son really m stepped up his game this year, and he has one poster on the wall. So you know, watch out for the decorations. He's a minimalist. I would say that that would be a great way to describe it. Yes, a minimalist. Um, so we mentioned earlier that uh, that, that uh, Superintendent Good and I and our police uh, department uh, representatives as well as safety representatives all kind of sat around and we talked about a lot of things. Um, the downside of the world that we live in in some cases is we, we have to prepare for the worst. Uh, we hope for the best, but we also have to make sure that our policies and procedures are in place so if something does happen where assistance is required that we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Um, so for those of you out there that are watching and want to know a little bit more, what are some of the things that Reynoldsburg is doing this year um, to help make sure the kids stay safe. Mm -hmm. and, and you're absolutely right that safety is our number one concern because mm -hmm. if kids aren't safe in school, um, then we can't educate them. Um, you know, that is our absolute number one concern. So um, first of all, I want to do a shout out to our Jim Ramsey, our mm -hmm. safety director, who has just been amazing. Yeah. Came in last year with a lot of uh, police experience as well and looked at some very solid processes in place uh, but has been observing for several months and has made um, some changes where he saw some weaknesses um, as um, kind of up the game when it comes to processes and procedures because it's always very important that those are in place. Um, and that is part of the, you know, the bridging that went on in those meetings that you talked about yeah. um, because everyone really needs to be on the same page when, you know, a decision has to be made absolutely immediately. Um, uh, we have one of the largest security teams in Central Ohio in Reynoldsburg, and I'm real proud of them as well and his team and everything that they are doing. Um, uh, again, district leadership has already met and bridged with you um, in the event that we do have to um, uh, respond to an emergency. We know we will have probably some small emergencies. We usually do, um, but in the event of even a larger uh, emergency. And we know our security team is very important, um, and not only our SROs, but um, those on our own staff. And, and that they're in those buildings and they're placed in those buildings very thoughtfully. So they're mm -hmm. establishing those relationships because sometimes, um, you know, that may be how you find out about something that could escalate yeah. uh, to an emergency. So again, relationships, reading arithmetic, um, the relationships are very, very important, um, even when it comes to safety and security. Um, so we had a communication um, that did go out just to remind parents about some of our safety protocols. Um, Raider Pause, which kind of controls movements within the school. Um, limited mobility, which 
controls uh, students, maybe in classrooms or certain segments and areas of the room. And then, of course, we have lockdown, which um, you know we hope we don't have to go into that, uh, where the kids actually shelter in place or um, there is a evacuation. And those are things that we constantly yeah. uh, practice. Um, unfortunately, as you said, in this day and age, it's something that, that you need to do. And having been in there with students, they understand, even some of the it's, young ones. It's, all, it's habit at this point. They're very familiar with it. Right, exactly. Um, we know that can be scary. Um, but what we want to really remind parents, too, is that we have these procedures, these protocols in place um, that have not only been vetted by our team, but by the state, mm -hmm. um, and they're in there for a reason. It's to protect children, um, but it's also to protect those families as well. So we ask parents not to come to the schools, um, and, and I know they always want to, it's scary and um, when something's going on, mm -hmm. but we're going to communicate as much as we can. Um, usually it's a all call or a text mm -hmm. um, that will go out first, so please, please, please make sure um, that you have those emergency forms filled out or you have everything with the building secretary or up to date in power school. And those are usually just an immediate let you know what's going on. We need time to investigate and to address the problem that could be going on at that school. And then later on, we always follow up with an email with some more information um, after that. Which actually we did have a conversation about that as well as um, for those situations where, you know, sometimes rumors get out on social media. I don't know if you've experienced any of that at all. Um, but sometimes it does come out there, and so we decided that uh, I think that we're going to work together as far as the city, the police department, and the school district to make sure that if something kind of falls in that realm where something has to be released, that we're working on those joint statements together. Because a lot of times um, people always say, well, I heard blah happen, or I knew this happened, or something like that, and that's just not the case. And so sometimes it is in the best interest of everybody to sit there and say, no, this is actually what happened within, you know, within reason and within detail to make sure our privacy rights are, you know, accepted and things like that. But right. just more open and upfront, just because I think that's people, people want to know. And it's a lot of times it's, if we're letting you know what's happening, it takes away from some people who are very, uh, really good storytellers and can make up a, a story of things that just aren't true. Right. I mean, it's a catch-22 because we want to inform everyone mm -hmm. um, and we want to um, have the eyes and the ears on the ground. As Again, mm -hmm. it's about those relationships because possible threats do come out on social media and what have you. So, um, But if you're a parent, social media is not the place to get the information about what is going on at the school. That will come in a call and a text. Yeah. It will be brief at the beginning uh, because we need to focus in mm -hmm. on uh, a solution to that uh, emergency that's happening and then afterwards. So um, I, I think we say that a lot too. Please do not get your news uh, from social media. Um, but it is something that we are definitely paying attention to yeah. because sometimes, uh, particularly among teens, that's where rumors and even mm -hmm. um, sometimes um, more than rumors uh, circulate. Um, so I, I just have some notes. I want to make sure that I cover everything because I want to be very thorough. Um, so we are also working this year uh, to address mental health of students in our schools um, because we know that a lot of that mental health, um, when kids are suffering, when there's some trauma, uh, we know that everything that we've gone through with COVID, um, it, it often comes out in disciplinary issues. Yeah. And so again, establishing those relationships um, with our SROs and our own uh, uh, security team allows students to be able to communicate with trusted law enforcement individuals in our schools and prevent that. Um, so that's one of the things that uh, Mr. Ramsey is working on, rolling out some dedicated plans, working hand in hand with our student services, um, because we know that those um, definitely uh, work together. Um, also, I, I want to um, address something, um, and that's drugs in our schools, right? Mm -hmm. So unfortunately that we know that this happens and um, this can lead to other problems, emergencies, yeah. um, uh, problems uh, with our students, disciplinary problems, and, and you know, can really escalate to things down the road. So uh, this year we have um, put into uh, our schools Halo smart, smart sensors, sorry, and those are kind of these um, multiple detection devices. So they can detect a lot of different things, um, smoke, marijuana, even gunshots, loud sounds, 
all in areas where you can't put a camera. Yeah. And that's always been very difficult for us, um, things that um, sometimes happen in the bathrooms. And so again, you know, it's all safety and security, trying to protect our kids. Uh, we're not trying to have that gotcha moment, but we want to protect them and give everyone a safe and secure environment um, in our schools. Uh, we've also increased the number of counselors, um, particularly at our high schools. Um, and we also have some really, really great faith-based relationships. Um, I know that David Diani was at a board meeting last night and talked about how he has never seen such a strong group of um, individuals who are working um, to help our kids in school, not only with hats and scarves and and um, you know food drives and things like this, um, but also when there is an emergency, uh, when there is um, some type of trauma that might be going on. Uh, we had a student who was uh, killed in the result of some violence, and yeah. not in our community, but in Columbus, and and they're there to help and reach out and counsel and what have you. So those are some really really. Um, strong relationships that we have. Uh, again, the three R's this year that we are focusing on. Um, and again, I just kind of go back to that whole idea of relationships. Um, you we're talking about that relationship between the city, the police department, and uh, the district. We're talking about those relationships between um, security and law enforcement personnel in our schools with the students. Um, and that's all very important, not only in responding to an emergency, but helping to prevent one. Well, you know, we talk about safety, and for the most part, when you talk about safety, it is related to those other incidents. But what I like that you talked about is some of the counselors and some of the mental health aspects of it. Um, we know that bullying is something that is a, a constant in our schools. It's a constant in every school. Um, and so having somebody out there to find ways to address it, to deal with it, and to have those counselors on staff is going to be a benefit to everyone. Um, it's unfortunate that it happens, and, you know, unfortunately, there are a lot of times out there where people don't always think that, they're, that their little angel is the one either responsible for bullying or a lot of times that they don't think their kid is, be, is being bullied. Um, but the reality is it is better to say something now, it is better to say something to people who are gonna be able to do something about it. Um, as much as social media can be a great place to vent about certain things that go on, the reality is if you feel your child is being bullied um, or you suspect your child is bullying someone, um, that's time to come and talk to the professionals. Uh, so that's just my thought process on those things. So I appreciate the fact that there's more counselors out there. Yes. All right, turning to something a little bit more lighthearted, um, you and a number of others started the Reynoldsburg Education Foundation a number of years ago. So why don't you tell everybody who's watching, what exactly does that mean for you, who's makes, you know, who does it, what goes on, and what are those funds used for? Mm -hmm. So um, the Brownsburg Education Foundation is an independent, nonprofit organization uh, that supports our schools, mm -hmm. um, supports our kids, supports our teachers. And they're pretty much uh, two main veins of that. Um, we have scholarships and uh, we have mini grants uh, for our classroom teachers, which uh, directly affect our students. So. Um, we have, as you said, a relatively new organization. So, of course, you have to start first with a lot of that fundraising, uh, which we have been working to do, and education. Uh, we had some folks uh, handing out some things at the Tomato Festival. We've tried to uh, be at some other places um, and other events this year to try to educate everyone about what the Reynoldsburg Education Foundation is all about. Um, we have um, done some great fundraising um, thanks to many community members um, you know large donations small donations it's all wonderful it's all welcome and uh, so uh, we have, are uh, proud to announce that we are beginning our third round of mini grant applications um, so as I said you know we have scholarships and we have mini grants Scholarships will go to students in schools. Mm -hmm. um, we have that as part of our five, one, five, and 10-year plan. Uh, we're not quite there yet. We want our very first scholarships uh, to be handed out to students who go on that eighth grade trip to DC. We yeah. feel like that is a rite of passage and to be able to hand out some full scholarships or partial scholarships will be just absolutely amazing to allow some students that opportunity. But as far as grants, that's where we have started in the mini grants in the classroom. and. Um, we have handed out so far, let's see, so I know that we did some uh, shoes mm -hmm. for um, the jazz uh, uh, class that is up at Reynoldsburg High School Summit, um, taught by Ballet Met. Um, we had some kids there that didn't have shoes and being in socks, and even though I remember being at my brother's wedding and just like sliding forever, it was lots of fun. 
it's not really safe when yeah. you are doing a dance class. So um, we uh, helped fund the creation of a mini lab for English language learners at the 9X. Um, students have experienced a day of exploration at Quarry Park. That was at Taylor Road Elementary School. Um, we had some great gardens that were started, um, box gardens at Summit Road um, Elementary, which I had a salad from, which was fabulous. Um, so much, much more. And we're so excited that we are able to um, be able to award some of these mini grants. They will uh, get larger as we grow um, as a nonprofit. Um, and we do that through, um, right now, uh, three main events. One is the gala, which is coming up um, on the 22nd of September. That's at the beautiful 1883 locale. Uh, it's a chance to come and bid on some really great items. Yep. Um, to have some drinks and some great food by one of our own, Trevor Horn. Um, and it's just a great place to um, enjoy some of the beautiful things that our district is and our students are producing, uh, but then also to relax with some friends. So that's a great fundraiser. We also have another one coming up on uh, no, um, October 1st, sorry. Mm -hmm. On October 1st, that's the Mulligan Golf Classic and that uh, we partner with Heart Food Pantry. And that had traditionally, because of COVID, has been a week-long uh, golfing event, but we want it to be a little bit more of a traditional scramble this year. So everyone will come, we'll do it on one day, we'll start as a scramble, um, and then end up at the clubhouse watching the OSU game, some awards, some fun pictures, some, um, some raffle items to give away. So um, again, that's another wonderful fundraiser, uh, benefiting not only the Education Foundation, but the Heart Food Pantry. And then finally, we are always participating mm -hmm. at the Christmas on the Town. Yep. And so we usually do a little raffle there. We have a donation and we get all the wants and wishes from all our schools and then people buy raffle tickets. And whoever wins gets to identify which school they want it to go to. So uh, I know we've had Summit Road, um, the Summit Campus, mm -hmm. uh, Roundsburg High School win once. And some of the money there went to their um, uh, behavior program and uh, for some incentives for students. And then kind of in the same vein, Slate Ridge Elementary won, and they have a store where kids earn bucks for positive behavior throughout the year, and they go and they shop there. So um, our website, I have to say, is down today. We've been working on this for a couple of days, but please, I'm gonna leave here and go home, and, and I would, that's why I, was, I came here like almost late, because I was trying to get it up. Um, but we've had a couple of problems, and uh, but it has been up for several years. So this is the first time it's been down. Please visit it, Reynoldsburg Education Foundation. All I have to do is search it. Um, you can see all sorts of information, not only about our fundraisers, uh, but pictures of the kids yeah. um, uh, that have been the recipients of our mini grants as well. So a lot of fun things going on. Um, yeah, it's a great, a great opportunity. I've not had a chance. I, no, I take that back. I did participate in the Mulligan. Um, and no windows were broken, but I think a few roofs were hit. Um, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, but obviously the gala is a wonderful time. It was a great experience last time at a, at a good local business. Mm -hmm. um, and we loved, last year we were able to do the dunk tanks, yep, yep. Um, which was a great fundraiser <laughs> for us as well. So. I was, it was yeah. a lot of fun. And I tell oh. you, it was refreshing this year to get in the dunk tank. So. And you got a pie in the face. Yeah, at that's right. Football at one game of the football last games. year. Yep, yeah. I forgot about that. Um, so always, you never know, maybe we'll see that one again. Uh, speaking of football, um, you know, Football Friday Night is coming up. Uh, it's going to be the first game of the season between uh, Reynoldsburg and Upper Arlington. Um, it's not just football that's starting up. We've got cross country. We've got uh, girls and boys soccer. We've got golf. We've got tennis. We've got volleyball. Um, there's something about that high school sports atmosphere. Uh, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of people cheering, a lot of people having fun. Um, I know you try and get to as many of those events as you can. So are you ready for this Friday night? Are you ready for the first game? You know, this is such an exciting part of the year, as you said. Mm -hmm. it, and I think back to when my son played hockey. And he played for a lot of different teams and some travel teams. But when, um, you know, we don't have our own uh, hockey team here. So when he played for the golf team and he played for the baseball team mm -hmm. here at, high, at Reynoldsburg High School, he was so excited yeah. to wear that purple and gold, um, to be able to don those colors, to be a Raider. There's nothing like playing for your school team. Yeah. And uh, my daughter plays uh, tennis, so I, I attended that. And uh, um, yeah, it, we've been working really hard to get all those facilities mm -hmm. uh, ready, and it's so exciting. And if you haven't gone to a football game, 
If you're not a football fan, still, it has the best sunsets oh, yeah. in Reynoldsburg. <laughs> they are amazing. If you haven't seen the pictures on Facebook, um, they don't disappoint. So, yes, I'm very, very excited uh, for all those. I try to get around to a lot of different sports uh, mm -hmm. throughout the year, uh, but definitely this is an exciting part of the year. And, and for us, we're like, oh, it's exciting. Everything's starting when those athletes really have been practicing. For quite some time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I do have two questions that were submitted uh, via email, and something tells me there might be one or two up online, so we'll kind of go with those. We're going to start off with the first one. Um, this is going to be uh, from John uh, Sariak, who uh, lives uh, just not too far, actually, from either of us. Um, there's been quite a lot of coverage lately, especially here in Ohio, about the emotional or mental health concerns of our youth after COVID. Are we observing some mental health issues with some of our student populations being reflected in student attendance, performance, and concerning behaviors? If so, how is our school administration and staff addressing these? Um, also, educators' mental health as well. Um, we're, uh, educators, we're all insane, but that's okay. Uh, how are we addressing the mental health of our educators as well? Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and John, I brought lots of notes with me because I wanted to be thorough. Um, you know, John is, is amazing and always has really great thoughtful questions, uh, not only for me, but for other people mm -hmm. um, on the board and, and with our district. Um, but I think even, you know, during COVID, we were seeing, um, as students were returning to school, we saw um, definitely some behaviors um, because students were in isolation or they weren't in the regular routine or some of those trusted adults that they would see and rely on every day in schools um, were not there. So um, it has been quite a transition. Um, as you said, this year we're coming back uh, probably as, as normal as we have in a long time, but we ended the year last year pretty normally, so um, that was very positive. Um, but uh, so as a district, definitely we have expanded and responded to a lot of those mental health um, supports in all of our grades. Um, we've added behavioral health specialists in each grade, so elementary, middle, junior high, and high school. Uh, the behavior health specialists are licensed counselors, all right, and they provide um, allows to provide a spectrum of support for our students um, because when I say spectrum, you know, sometimes there is a, a minimal amount of intervention and sometimes in, it requires quite a bit more. Um, we have our school counselors and we have two additional ones um, at the high school, so we're uh, really excited about that. Uh, we have our social workers, behavioral health specialists in our buildings, in addition to um, some great community partners, again, all about those relationships. Um, I know I can, Nationwide Children's Hospital, UMCH Family Services, which has a mission of strengthening communities by providing care, nurture, and treatment for hurting children and families uh, through trauma-informed care, um, the Buckeye Ranch, and Southeast Behavioral Health Services. So those are just a few of the groups um, that we are partnering with to be able to supplement um, some of the counselors and uh, people that we already employ in our schools. Um, we also have social and emotional learning teams at each and every one of our schools, so we are making sure that that is going on in a concerted effort um, in each of our schools and that they kids have these behavior supports. Um, I've been a part of the Reynoldsburg High School's campus team uh, for several years now, um, so I'm always excited to be a part of that work. Um, and, and that work is not just supports for uh, students, it's for uh, teachers as well. Uh, we also have a new program that we're rolling out this year. Uh, teachers have a lot on their plate, a lot of things they have to work about, worry about. Um, that reading and arithmetic as well as a number of other academic um, areas. And so we wanted to take something off their plate. And so we purchased a, a program uh, that teachers are going to be rolling out this year in their classrooms that will allow a little bit of that daily social and emotional learning. Um, and, uh, so they don't have to go and try to come up with the resources and, and what have you. And it doesn't take a lot of their day. Um, and it's also geared um, towards all different age levels. So um, we're happy to be rolling that out this year. Um, also for our staff, the district is partnering with the Franklin County Family First Council. Uh, this partnership will provide resiliency coaching for our teaching staffs at Baldwin, Hams, 9X, and the Livingston Campus. Um, through Building Better Lives program. Uh, we're also pro providing staff with trauma care and secondary trauma care because that's what we talk about, you know, that secondary trauma care. Teachers dealing with students and helping them and giving them support uh, who have experienced trauma 
often become traumatized themselves. It is an incredible drain. Um, so we are providing supports uh, for them as well. And then finally, our human resources department has expanded the resources provided through Medical Mutual um, so that teachers can reach out um, on a private basis to Medical Mutual for supports. And I also know that a couple local businesses are happy to support our teachers as well. I believe Pro Stand Tempe Taco actually had ads out just the other way. <laughs> teachers, welcome back to school, and they had a drink special. So uh, shout out to uh, Pro Stand Tempe Taco for always supporting the Reynoldsburg educators. Um, we did have one last question uh, that was submitted, so I'm sure we have a few online. Um, apparently, the flagpole, uh, there's some concrete work that had gone on at the Livingston campus. Uh, so can you tell us when the flagpole is going to be back, when uh, you know the old glory is going to be hanging up yet again? Right. So this was some work that was done this summer mm -hmm. um, to just around the, the one entrance um, that's right there by the mural at Livingston. Uh, we had to take down the flagpole. Um, we have already ordered it and we're just waiting for the delivery. Okay. Um, I do appreciate that question because in some of my previous jobs, I did protocol for um, the Department of Defense. And so that was one of the things that when I came to the district, I was always making sure um, that if we had flags up at night, you know, they were lit. Uh, if they were tattered, they were replaced. So I appreciate that question. But right. very soon, it's on order. On order? Yes. The check is in the mail. And, all right. So I know we got a couple of questions online, so go ahead and... Uh... Fire away. We do. We, I'm going to combine two of the questions together. It's asking if you can make any uh, comments about Ogden's uh, resignation. And then when will the taxpayers be given an itemized financial list of the cost of the first and second superintendent searches, the amount the consultant will be paid, and the total amount to be paid to our intern superintendent? Where can they find that information? So, um, you know, I think we, I kind of covered this at um, our board meeting. Let's see, this is August, so that would have been in uh, July. Um, and the Reynoldsburg City School District um, just came to an agreement with Gary Lee Ogden uh, to transition her to um, a more appropriate role. Um, and that was consulting and doing some consulting work with her. And that was when we brought on uh, Dr. Dan Good as an interim uh, superintendent. Um, and that was just uh, a, a mutual agreement, one that we felt um, you know, uh, was beneficial to both parties. Um, as far as, I think you went through a lot of inf financial information. Um, yeah. it, it's not all out there in one place. Um, of course, when uh, we passed a number of those documents in July or approved those as a board, um, there are always attachments there. So each of the contracts um, had information on those. Um, so that is one place if you go back into, I think, our district website and school board. And if you go over to um, uh, board meetings and then you can see board docs, that's where we store absolutely everything. Um, all the, um, uh, I guess you'd say, written communication mm -hmm. and attachments that go along with everything that we approve. Um, so you'll be able to find a number of those documents there. Uh, but then also, um, uh, we have our, our podcast mm -hmm. um, that is out there because our videos do stay out on our website for about a month. But up after that, you don't, can't look at our beautiful faces anymore, but that you could still <laughs> listen to us uh, in the podcast as well. But um, I will definitely um, get that information if I can and uh, even make sure that I reach out to that viewer uh, mm -hmm. because it sounds like... Um, I know you went through a whole list and there might be some other things out there, um, but definitely go into board docs at our July meeting and those contracts uh, with the details are out there. Okay. All right. What is the big biggest initiative that you are excited about that has not yet started? Oh, gosh. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'd have to say, um, because I am confident this will happen. We had our bond issue mm -hmm. defeated by 210 votes, very small margin. And we have some amazing ideas and plans that are associated with that bond issue and with that money. And that's what I'm most excited for. Um, and, and I guess I say that whole, um, that whole project, inside that project are a number of different initiatives. Um, one is, full day kindergarten uh, for our students. I'm, I'm so excited that I know one day very soon that we are going to have this early childhood development center and that it's going to be an amazing space specifically for early learners, kindergartners and preschoolers. Um, we 
have had to move around our preschool program quite a bit. And that's hard. That's hard because we have some special needs students that mm -hmm. um, are in that program as well. And change is difficult. Um, but it's also difficult to adapt in different spaces all the time, not to meet their needs. And so to have an amazing building, and um, I think when we were first hearing from some of the different contractors who were um, pitching their ideas and their uh, pictures to us, we saw the potential of what this space could be. And so I'm super excited about that because I know that will pass um, eventually here in this district and we will look forward to full day kindergarten and a great space for our young learners. But also part of that is um, a new space for our middle and junior high at Hams. And while you know I have great reverence for that building and we've talked a lot about being able to incorporate pieces and parts of that building, like literally incorporated into a new building, those students in that area deserve as great of a space as all of our other neighborhoods have uh, for their children. So um, I'm really excited for both of those projects. I know that's a little bit down the road. It's not going to happen um, this year, although um, the voters could possibly have the chance to pave the way this year to make that happen. Um, but I guess I would say that's what I'm most excited for. All right. You might be able to answer this one, Joe. What's a scramble? A scramble? So, <laughs> well, normally I would say eggs. Um, no, scramble. So normally instead of having uh, everybody start at one, you know, at, at the first hole of a golf tournament, everybody kind of has their own hole that they go to, and then they start from there and rotate around. So, so you could all end at the same time and celebrate at the same time. There you go. I know your love of golf, so. Yes. <laughs> That's all the questions we have right well, now. Well, and I'm going to say, too, because I know Dr. Dan Good said that he is not a real um, great foot, or football um, golf player. Mm -hmm. um, Angela Abram and I said we weren't either, but we had the best time coming out. And, you know, um, you usually play the best ball. Um, Chris Shook. Yeah, um, was, was part of my first team, so um, and um, Mr. Silvati. So we relied on their balls quite a bit. I don't think uh, mine uh, was used. Um, usually <laughs> wasn't that close to yeah. the hole or farther along. But it's such a great day of camaraderie, and it goes for such a great cause. So even if you don't know what a scramble is, um, a birdie, a... Just go support the ball. cause. It's all good. <laughs> That's, right. Yep. That's right. That's all the questions we have right, right now. Well, if there are other questions, um, obviously we'll kind of go through uh, as we move through. I'm just, I'm excited. Um, you know, my heart will always be a teacher, so I'm always excited about it. Uh, I don't miss, you know, walking through the school supply lanes and picking up a whole bunch of school supplies, but I did get a new lunchbox this year, so I'm all set for that. Oh, what is it? Uh, I'll show you. It's a the Scooby Doo mystery machine. Oh, it's very appropriate. <laughs> um, so if you don't, if you don't mind, can you stick around for a little bit as we kind of go through some other things? Um, so just kind of a couple of things that I've seen recently. Uh, we do have some code enforcement issues. Uh, yes, I've seen the information about the sign out by the Olive Garden. Um, that is a very tricky area to deal with at times um, because it is relatively high up. Um, so we are going to get that taken care of and uh, have a maintenance plan with it. Uh, but more importantly. Um, it's just a matter of time before a lot of major road construction projects for the Ohio Department of Transportation kick off. Um, this includes not only 270 and 70, it includes 70 at Bryce, which we were just informed uh, last Friday that that project may move up as early as 2024, mm -hmm. uh, which means that the project of 70 and 256 and the most likely uh, new addition, which would be 70 and Taylor Road, could be as soon as a few years just after that. So sometime within the before 2030, you're gonna have a lot of that stuff out there. So when that intersection at 256 gets redone, we're gonna come up with a better plan to, first of all, kind of announce that you are in Reynoldsburg and something that obviously uh, is a little bit easier to maintain uh, given the circumstance of how slopey, you know, the, the high vertical slope of that is. Nice. So. I would say it's like a wedding invitation, right? Mm -hmm. You get that invitation, it kind of lets you know what the wedding is going to be like. And yep. you see those bridges, and I think that's a great welcome into, you know, your community. Yeah, we're hoping to put, you know, our signage up there just the same as every a lot of other communities have. Um, we do have some road updates. As always, I start off with Main Street. Um, you know, we are waiting. Right, so we have a meeting tomorrow to finalize details of when the power lines are going to come down because it's not just as simple as going and pulling them down. Uh, but we have the power lines to take down, and then we have some of the old power, uh, the poles that are there that they're on currently. We have to get those out of the way as well. Um, so that's going to happen in the very, very near future. 
I uh, was just out there earlier today. I uh, got some encouraging words from some community members about how well it looks, so we appreciate that. Um, so right now they are getting all the gravel ready in front of uh, Cotner's Funeral Home and the barbershop and everything because the concrete for the sidewalks is going in tomorrow. Uh, so that's going to go in tomorrow and they're going to firm that up and the hope is to have the asphalt in and the rest of the concrete in and the intersection of Jackson so that way we can get it to get, uh, together. So it may not be ready for Monday, but probably by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week that intersection will be back open completely. Thankfully we've had some good weather, so hopefully we can make sure that that works. Um, from there, you may have noticed that there's some more work uh, starting actually from Jackson to Wagner. Uh, that is actually Columbia Gas. Uh, they are going and improving all of the lines in there, so that's what you're seeing. But usually they get started probably about 8, 9 o'clock, um, and you've probably seen the steel uh, plates on there. So they're digging it up and getting ready to replace all of that to make it a safer and more efficient gas line. Uh, once they get that done, they're going to start stretching out to the individual businesses and homes on either side. So that second phase of the project is moving forward, which is good because they're actually only three weeks behind schedule instead of six like they were last year. So thank you, Columbia Gas, really. Um, so we got that going on. Uh, most of our residential roads are uh, done, our, our smaller areas, but we do have a couple of big ones coming up. First of all, we have Hill Ridge, which is going to start on the 22nd. Uh, so for those residents that are over there, uh, it is getting done and it's going to be one of those things where it's a full depth and, you know, um, yeah, drill it and mill it and all of that fun stuff. Uh, we also have Taylor Road Southwest. Uh, this is going to take a little bit longer. So this is basically everywhere from basically the elementary school all the way to the intersection at 256. Um, so that's going to be completely done. Uh, that includes the sidewalks and all of the other stuff. So you may have seen some of that work happen in some of those areas already. Uh, but that's going to start the first week of September. Um, so we're working on that one to make sure it's as, not as impactful and disturbing as possible. Uh, we'll also be having on our website, as soon as Jennifer and I can kind of uh, agree on what, the, what it all looks like, what our road plans are for 23 and 24. Um, we have them further out than that, but 23 and 24 is probably the ones that are going to be the most likely to get done. Uh, remember, roads are in the program, but it depends on budgeting, it depends on finances, depends on materials cost. So while this is what we would like to do, sometimes those things can change. Uh, but as the members of Canada and Cuthbert Court, uh, they were on schedule for last year, but we couldn't get them in. So they moved to this year and they are now done and they have beautiful brand new roads. So I uh, appreciate that on that part. Uh, again, I already mentioned about the Ohio Department of Transportation. Um, all of those projects are coming in. Um, Going to be a lot of things in there. As soon as we know more, I'll be happy to share with you. Um, some really good news. Uh, for those of you that uh, didn't get a chance to watch the uh, last uh, council meeting from July, uh, we had kind of a review of our city finances. Uh, the auditor's office and I worked really well together with our directors and everybody to make sure that we're kind of containing spending. Uh, but we have also been very happy with uh, a lot of growth uh, between the number of new businesses in Reynoldsburg and things like that. We're actually doing quite well financially, which helps us provide services to the community moving forward. Uh, so we're going to be doing a lot of those things uh, moving forward. So we really appreciate that. It's a great partnership that we have. Uh, because again, once uh, as the city becomes successful, that means we can do more roads, we can have more programming and parks and things of that nature. Uh, so again, good, good things to hear. It's always better, especially with the unknown of uh, work from home. We didn't know how that was going to impact everything. And it looks like we things have gotten uh, much better than the dire, uh, dire circumstances that we were hoping to avoid. Uh, also, again, just a reminder, I know you weren't able to join us at the Tomato Festival this year, uh, but for everybody watching, if you have any questions, suggestions uh, about what you would like to see, what you liked at the Tomato Festival, what you would like to see moving forward, things to come back, all of that, uh, go ahead and let us know. Uh, you can put it on the social media here, um, but we'll also be having the volunteer meetings probably after the first of the year. Uh, kick those back up again just to kind of get that back in. So we already are having those conversations about uh, some big things. Obviously, rides were very popular this year. We want to make sure we get some rides next year, uh, as well as our musical acts and things of that nature. Tomato so, Wars. Yes, Tomato Wars were good. <laughs> um, uh, Reynoldsburg Police Department does have a couple of opportunities. They have a few slots left for their Citizens Police Academy. So uh, classes start on Thursday, uh, the September, oops, September 1st. Uh, so it's just a, and it's an eight week program. We also have the women's self-defense class, has a couple of spots open as well. Um, that is basically four days, the 7th, 8th, 12th, and 14th. Um, and again, it's for anyone, uh, any women from the ages of 12 and up. So we've got that going for us. Um, talking about some parks, uh, Bryce Park is we're having our next meeting uh, next week to kind of finalize plans for what Bryce Park is going to look like. So we're really enthusiastic about that so we can get that in front of council so everybody can see exactly how that's going to look. Um, it's a different type of park than what we have. It's very passive, so you're going to see a lot of trails, a gazebo, 
all of that type of thing. So while the library is being built, Bryce Park's gonna be done, and then soon we're gonna show the Alliance Project and what that's all about. So that entire Bryce Road corridor is gonna change uh, significantly starting uh, in next year. A um, couple of other fun things for the parks. We've got, uh, on the 20th, we've got the family float. Uh, you learn about some kayak safety. On the 21st, we have rock hoppers at Pine Quarry uh, Creek, so you can go out there and see whatever critters are out there. August 23rd is Discovery Hour with the basic kitchen ingredients. These are for our, some of our young chefs in waiting. And then on August 28th, you get to dye your own t-shirt. So if you want to learn more about that, go to our Parks and Rec page and you can go ahead and register. There are still spots for all of those things. Uh, we have some news on the Livingston House. The bridge area is actually done. So if you actually drive on Graham, you can actually see the bridge, uh, the pedestrian bridge on there. Uh, so now the next step is uh, getting ready to put in the multi-purpose path that's going to go to connect everything. So that'll be starting probably in about the next week to 10 days. So that'll mean that uh, for next year's concerts on the lawn at uh, the Livingston House, we're going to have additional parking. We're going to have a nice pathway there, all of that. So it's going to be a really good thing. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, we have our farmer's market again. We only have a couple more weeks to go for farmer's market. Uh, so make sure you come out for farmer's market. I didn't see who was uh, some of our special guests, but uh, hopefully they'll, uh, it'll be a great uh, event as always. I know I'm usually picking up a couple of cake pops and a few other things. Schmitz will be there. I've got lots of questions about that. All right, Schmitz. <laughs> all right, Schmitz is scheduled to be there. Yeah. <laughs> Schmitz is scheduled. So well, hopefully that they will be here. Uh, we do have our school supply drive this weekend. Uh, it starts at uh, 10 o'clock here at City Hall. This is uh, sponsored by the City of Reynoldsburg, Reynoldsburg. City Schools, the Lions Club, Impact Church. Uh, we're going to be collecting school supplies uh, this Saturday and then a week from this Saturday on the 27th we're going to be passing them out like we've done in the past. Uh, so big shout out to all of them. Again, your typical school supplies, pens, papers, co uh, composition books, notebook paper, um, fun things, backpacks if you markers. want to, markers, crayons, all that stuff. Uh, scissors, uh, safety scissors of course. Uh, but all of those things are out there for this weekend. Um, and we mentioned already, again, this Friday night, we've got Football Friday Night at the home opener that's also going to recognize the first OCC champs as well as the 1993 playoff champions or playoff wins. Um, with that, do we have any questions that have come in in, in between? No. Nope. Nothing at all? All right, that sounds fine to me. Uh, next week, we are actually going to uh, shift back a little bit to some in-house people. We have Judy Dorn, who is our senior, uh, Reynoldsburg Senior Center manager there. So we're going to have a big following of all of the senior citizens from our Senior Citizen Center to talk about what's going on out there and some great things. Uh, but a couple other last things kind of tie things up. Um, first off, uh, today's kind of a bittersweet day here in Reynoldsburg. Um, you know, the end of summer usually means that a lot of our interns have kind of moved on. So we've lost a couple of our interns from our communications department. So Caroline is on her on her way. Uh, we also had an intern in the attorney's office. And uh, obviously, uh, somebody who means a lot to me and a lot to people here, uh, Drew Longerberger, uh, is, he was a guest on the show earlier this year. He is actually going off to college tomorrow at my alma mater, Ohio University. Uh, go Bobcats. Um, he has been phenomenal help to the people here. Um, I don't think he realized exactly what he was going to be exposed to here at City Hall and the opportunities that are there. Uh, but he's taken advantage of it. Um, so for those of you, if you're out there watching and you know somebody in high school this year that's uh, that's a senior, going to be a senior that you think would do a good job or is interested in local politics, uh, by all means, have them kind of reach out to us. We'd love to have uh, anybody here to help with it. But again, uh, the bar's been set pretty high with Drew. Um, so he's hiding over there and not on the camera. So we do appreciate everything out there. Uh, that he's and been Drew able to came do. to most uh, board meetings as well. Yes, he's, so. oh yeah, he's very active in all yes, that. So uh, yes. the city of Athens city council meeting will have uh, one additional uh, viewer from here <laughs> on out. So we appreciate that. Um, the other thing, just a, a special shout out to uh, my friends and colleagues uh, from Columbus City Schools. Um, they're going through a rough time right now. Uh, they are in the middle of negotiations that are very tense. Um, there's a lot of issues in Columbus City Schools, and I can say that because I was a part of it for a very long time. Um, I am hopeful that uh, both sides are able to come to an agreement that everybody is content with. I don't want to say happy because uh, not everybody's ever going to be happy when it comes to this kind of a labor negotiation when everything is uh, very uh, intense. But having lived through the strike from a member of the, on the, a member of the board here um, and having my kids go through it, uh, it would be the absolute worst thing to happen uh, to the city of Columbus. Um, and I know everybody knows that. Uh, I know it would hurt the kids, it would hurt the teachers, it would hurt the family members, community members. So uh, best wishes and, and the best of luck to all groups uh, as they realize that ultimately they do want the same thing. Uh, it's just how to get there. Um, you know, my philosophy is, you know, you find a way to get it done. Um, so that's uh, my best wishes for all of them out there uh, because my heart's with you every day. 
Uh, with that, please stay safe, stay respectful. Um, make sure if you have a Kia, lock it up for goodness sake. Uh, too many stolen Kias everywhere. Uh, please put your shopping carts away. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and we will see you next week on Wednesday. Bye, everybody.